Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Hey, yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I'm not going to mess anything uh, else up now. Okay, no worries, no worries. I'm just going to leave it as it is. If you think that the audio is uh, uh, is good enough, then uh, it's good yeah, enough. Yeah, it's all, it's all fine. All fine. How are you all guys? Fine. How are you, Patrick? I'm very good. Uh, enjoying life. Uh, how are you? I am um, also fine. I'm also enjoying life. Uh how how has it's been a long time since we spoke uh or met even uh a few years even what's happened af- with you after that oh yeah long story long story i went back to uk then i went to poland and then i'm back in norway so currently i'm in norway and uh as a uh, ferdi my friend uh, he is using the be your best system and he loves it who is ferdi to the to the me. Oh, Ferdi. Okay. Oh, yeah. so it's not Ahmed. It's Ferdi. That's uh, the Ahmed. Ferdi is my nickname. Okay, but we we go by Ferdi. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever you feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, Ferdi is great. Ferdi is good. Okay. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um. Do you use the system? Yeah, it's still learning a lot, quite a bit. Um. I don't know. I don't know how it goes, but I'm on the, like Division One and the Gold League when I'm going through it. I don't know what comes when, after that. When did When did you start using the system? Um, Patrick, when did I start? Two months ago. Yeah, like two. two okay, months so, ago. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's like fresh. recently. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, recently. And do, does that mean? Um, are you like an ambitious player? Or are you? Are you? Going pro? Are you a pro? Like, how? how um, what's your I used situation? To be. I used to be. Um, I'm yeah. trying to get into back into the pro game of stuff like that. So, um, I'm just trying to get myself prepared uh, for for upcoming trials and stuff like that. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And how about you, Patrick? Uh, I will uh, hopefully soon sign with the Ike Tonsberg. So that's okay. a team in the uh, second division. Oh, so you you're in Norway right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So uh, I. Uh, I passed the trial and the coach just uh, want to see me in one more game and then we will sit uh, down and speak about the contract. Okay, cool. So yeah. I'm speaking to basically two up and coming ambitious footballers, right? That's the situation. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. <laughs> but okay, okay yeah, cool. yeah. So the podcast is about you, and uh, we want to ask you the first question uh, about your journey up to the point where you became a member of uh, Be Your Best, a worker of Be Your Best. Tell us. Sure. Of course. So just to be clear, I uh, am no longer with Be Your Best. So I worked there for about two years, starting uh, January 2020. So right before COVID. Uh, COVID. We can talk about that because the timing was terrible. But my journey is basically, I am also an ex-athlete, not a footballer though. I played tennis when I was young. So I was uh, an ambition, ambitious tennis player. I'm born in 87. So when I was between like 14 and 16, um, I was quite competitive in Europe. So I would play in the same tournaments as Djokovic, uh, Andy Murray, and all of these players because uh, Fabio Fognini, all of those players, they are born in the same year as me, 87. So we, I never got to play... I played Fabio Fognini at one point, but I never got to play Andy Murray or Djokovic uh, directly. But we played in the same, some of the same same tournaments. So I wanted to be a tennis player when I grew up. I ended up not going pro, didn't have the money, uh, but I uh, played college tennis in Chicago. So I got a scholarship there, went there, and I studied finance. Uh, also, a terrible timing of studying finance because I graduated in 2010, uh, 2010 basically, and not the midst of the financial crisis, but right in the aftermath of it. So getting a job was uh, uh, really hard. So I ended up into sales, which mm, I had experience with before. First and foremost, in the finance industry. And then later, I sort of 
uh, went more into software and tech sales. And the job that I had uh, prior to Be Your Best was at a software company called CSense, where my manager, I got hired by, by my manager, Anna Ruland, who then later became the first CEO of Be Your Best. And um, uh, when CSense was acquired by an American company, I was asked by Anna to consider joining Be Your Best. And so at that point, I was in talks with both Klarna and uh, Anna about Be Your Best. I eventually chose Be Your Best. So that's how I ended up there. And then after Be Your Best, I've still kept my, my footing in sort of the tech and software worlds, uh, but now at, at, at different companies. So that was my journey up until Be Your Best. So uh, I chose at that point uh, Be Your Best over, uh, over Klarna. What made you transition and trust the manager and go for Be Your Best? What was the, um, the trajectory and the, uh, the ambitions of the Be Your Best company appeal to you? Well, uh, there were several things. So first of all, I had my manager, um, Anna, uh, who I trusted, uh, etc. And we got along very well. She had hired me for CSense. Now she wanted me for Be Your Best. That was a positive right from the get-go, knowing the manager from before. Um, yeah. But I remember uh, when I interviewed with Anna, the one of the first thing I asked to do uh, was to try the system out. Um, and at that point, so you just started using it two months ago, Ahmed. This was in yeah. like 20, early 2020. The system wasn't nearly as good as it is yeah. uh, now. It has improved a lot over uh, over the course of those years. So it was a super like prototype type like system, but it was still good enough that I was actually amazed when when I tried it the first time. This, in my opinion, like this was I was super skeptical before trying the system. I was like this, I, I you know I didn't really know what to expect, but I thought it was going to be completely shit. Mm -hmm. When I tried it, I was quite amazed. Um, and I could definitely see this being the future of at least partly how footballers train uh, up to the professional level. And so I think I was convinced by just trying the system. I, if I hadn't tried the system, I don't think I would have uh, joined uh, Beer Best, to, to be honest. Um, but there was that. So, um, but like in general, um, CSense, the pre previous company that I worked for, was a like, larger company. Be Your Best was a very small, sketchy startup. Um, but I like, and definitely a more risky choice, but that's also part of my personality as well. Uh, you know, uh, taking chances, et cetera. I guess that, you know, comes from, from uh, being an athlete previously. Also, you'd like to have a more challenging uh, lifestyle at work. So uh, being in a startup, especially in sales, is definitely more challenging than uh, at a larger company. Okay, so uh, let's say I'm uh, I'm owner of uh, of some big club. Uh, how would you communicate to me the benefits of Be Your Best? And also, if you could uh, tell us a bit about uh, the clubs you worked with, if you can give us yeah, sure. Answers. So so the, I remember the. Basically, the the the, the pitch the um, of of the product and and the company um, uh, be your best, the, or the communication or the strategy of how we would sort of sell the system. The details would always change because this was a completely unique new product. So we tried a, uh, a lot of different things out in terms of um, how we would sell it and what we would sort of focus on, et cetera. But the core re always remained the same. And this was sort of uh, dictated by the chairman, Old Scott, I'm the founder and chairman of the company. And that was that Beer Best was supposed to be a um, uh, system and a company to improve cognitive skills and abilities for athletes, not even for only for footballers, uh, but for athletes in general. But obviously the product was specifically at the moment and still is focused on uh, football. So the way we would talk to clubs about this was uh, start a discussion around what they do for cognitive training. At this point, 
uh, in 2020, um, there were a lot of articles like it was like cognitive cognitive training was like a trend uh, in football. But people were writing more about it. Uh, it, it uh, statistics uh, were now more available in terms of like scanning and interviews with with players uh, would also sort of emphasize uh, mental or cognitive training. So that's sort of how we try to communicate the system as well. This is a tool um, to help your club and your players improve their cognitive abilities in a maybe a more efficient way than what you would do manually, right? So that that was sort of the core pitch. And then exactly in terms of the system and the features we emphasized and um, the value proposition, uh, the details of that would change. But I just told you the core, improve your, co improve your players' cognitive abilities. Would you pitch it more for like, all ages or more the kind of like academy players um, trying to change this into the senior level obviously because as the as you get older the speed of play of the game gets quicker and quicker and quicker um, who would you tailor it to like all ages or uh, specifically to more like um, 16 and over yeah that's a good question so this was also something we had to sort of figure out like who exactly were the optimal target group here so you had some constraints. This was a, you know, this is a VR system. And there were a different, we were compatible with, uh, you know, the first uh, Oculus Quest, and then it had set a, a, actually an enterprise headset called Pico, which like was crazy hard to get your hands on. Uh, and then finally the second uh, uh, Quest version. Um, so the first constraint was you couldn't really strap a headset on like an eight-year-old you know mm -hmm. uh they, they they just they're not uh physically you know fit to use like the headset uh you know so uh it had to be i think we decided to put like a lower age limit on it uh and i think that uh, age number i think that was 12 years old so like we would not recommend using the this tool at least with a headset at that point for players 12 years and younger. And so it basically became, we started sort of pitching the academy um, uh, players. So anywhere between 12 and 18 years old, uh, really. But also um, it turned out like other players, I'll actually come back to that, but it turned out like the most, like the 18 plus, let's say somewhere between 18 and 22 years old, super ambitious, maybe even already a pro player, turned out to be like the best users of the system. Um, maybe that has something to do with maturity and understanding of what we were, you were supposed to train on. But in general, I think if I had to give you an answer, the, tar the ideal target group back then, and I, my guess is still is, is players, ambitious players between 14 and 22 years old. And that and that's also the place that we tried to aim for, even when I was there and tried to sell it. Okay, so a sales job is uh, very much about the, the numbers game. So, like, the more people you contact, the bigger uh, chance you have to be successful. And uh, tell us uh, how did you how did you cope with uh, with getting rejected? So, contacting clubs or players, and then just getting the, the negative feedback. Yeah. Uh, so, first of all, actually, the the toughest part uh of selling the system and it's just like you said it's uh basically activity level is what matters here uh but the most frustrating part uh was actually not getting objections it was actually trying to get in touch with the right person now add to the fact that i started january 2020 what happens in march you get covid and pretty much the entire football industry is closed down uh mm -hmm. from you know march april um half of them being furloughed so then the people that that we tried to get in touch with so who was that was basically at coaches of course uh, like coaches of the individual uh teams managers uh basically um sports directors uh etc and you know half of these people especially the coaches were furloughed during COVID. So it was extremely difficult to even get in touch with these people. 
Uh, so that was uh, at least my experience, uh, the, the toughest thing dealing with trying to get in uh, touch with the right person at the club. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out, uh, like, uh, to find the contact info, et cetera, to all of these people. But in terms of objections, um, that's another thing when you work for, like, a startup. Um, you don't know what the objections are because it's a completely new and unique product uh, to market. Um, and so part of the process of selling it was actually figuring out like what are the objections um so i wasn't that wasn't really that tough because you knew you, this was a completely new system you knew you were going to get objections so it wasn't that big of a deal it's uh, diff more difficult when you have a more established product um but i would you know i dealt with those um in in the way you would sort of always deal with those you would you know uh try to sell this you pitch the system you ask if they want to buy they would say no, and you would ask, okay, why? Um, and then you'll get your uh, uh, your reasons. Sometimes these are like completely like hard no's, basically uh, no's that would disqualify them as a customer anyway. For example, we don't have the money, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's a pretty pretty hard one. Like you don't have the funding, uh, you don't have, you, you you can't finance a system like that for your team. Okay, then you know there's nothing we can do about that, right? Um, but then you have other systems, like, for example, when they say, oh, we don't have time to use it, right? So, sometimes that would be an objection, right? We don't have, we, we don't have resources. We don't have time to use it. Okay. That's something maybe you can work with, uh, right? So like the best tip I could give to any salesperson dealing with objections, um, is, so, and even more so for a startup company is if you get an objection uh, such as I don't have time to use the system, okay, then you would ask a hypothetical, okay, as a hypothetical question, if you did have time to use the system, would you buy? And if they say yes, then at least you have, you know, an isolated problem to solve for that you then could try it, you can try to solve for it uh, and then come back and get the sale. Um, so that's how, uh, we would uh, go around it, but it was, you know, the, the, the biggest problem with, and I guess this is the, still the big, it's not a problem. It's more like a challenge of selling a VR system like that is that you have to try it before you buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. And selling a system remotely like that. And we had to sell it remotely because of COVID, uh, at that point, you know, was extremely difficult. So you basically, I, I don't know about you, Fendi, but uh, did you did you buy or subscribe to the system before you had tried it? Maybe now this, oh, okay, actually I will come back to this because now the system is a lot um, uh, more affordable. Now I think they're, I checked their website yesterday. They're selling the system for $19 a month. Is that it? Yeah, or you can pay your phone, I think, uh, for the year. Right, but the pricing is around nineteen dollars a month. I think we sold it back then. It was sold for uh, a, around a hundred dollars a month, and you had to pay upfront for a year for one. So yeah, so extreme. So the pricing was completely. It was different. Patrick, I don't know. Patrick, did, were you ever a, a buy? Did you ever buy the system, or did you just try it? Uh, yeah, I bought the system. I was using it while I was injured, but uh, I uh, yeah. did not buy the f version for a full year. I was uh, subscribing month by month. So right. So okay. Yeah. So you you got a special deal, but yeah, it, yeah. I think I assume you paid something like that, like a hundred dollars a month at that time. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was it was it was a big amount. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know where where was I in the story. Um, did I talk about objections or what was it? What was the question? <laughs> uh, it was about uh, how you deal with the negative uh, negative feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. So, yeah, I remember the difficult part was obviously selling it remotely. Uh, they didn't have a chance to try it, obviously. You know, in order for them to try it, they would have to either buy a headset or we would have to send them um you know ship them a headset to even try and they would have to ship it back so that stuff stuff was was um you know difficult but i remember you know football is a 
like super conservative industry in my uh, opinion like when i spoke to these coaches um most of them thought it was silly right they didn't believe in the system right it was when when you heard okay so there's a vr system you can play and they thought it was just completely silly and more like a game uh for that you would play for fun rather than serious cognitive or training or training to improve your scanning um you know um so that was sort of an objection it was you know it's hard to even get past that when they can't even try the system uh so most of them thought it was silly and um but but you had you also had believers that certainly were looking for not maybe not this specific system but any system that could help them improve their cognitive training so there were some some clubs that um, I remember had a strong focus on cognitive training. FC Copenhagen was one of them. They were also a customer and still are, I think, uh, of, of your best. But it was also others that weren't customers, that, but that clubs that I was able to get in touch with. I remember uh, PSG uh, had uh, an extremely uh, large focus on this, especially on the academy level. They never bought the system, but I remember in the conversations with them about cognitive training and specifically scanning, uh, they said they would allocate at least uh, one hour completely dedicated a week, one hour a week completely dedicated to scanning on the pitch. So they would do uh, just scanning drills for uh, one full hour uh, dedicated each and every week for all sort of the teams uh, on the uh, academy level. Um, Yes, and then you have other clubs, etc. So, but yeah, they never bought the system. Uh, but there are other other challenges also. Um, um, you know, this is a startup. I I don't know. Now they have more clubs. I saw they had FC Cologne now, uh, for example, as a customer. Um, but it was very difficult, and it obviously is difficult to implement a system like that, like that, like efficiently at the club. Even we didn't know exactly how they were going to do it. We were sort of hoping that they would understand the system you know, understand what was uh, required to uh, make it work at their club. And we would sort of ship maybe the headsets and the software and they would sort of figure it out themselves after that. But it turned out that's actually quite difficult, but it's not impossible, but it's difficult. And it definitely requires in order for the uh, a club to use the system productively, it requires definitely some effort on their side. So it's not like super easy, um, but if done correctly, I think it's extremely, uh, it can be extremely helpful uh, for the club. One of the big players that you have uh, as a customer is obviously the main guy, Martin Odegaard. Okay. What makes him so special and more so different that you learned about him to kind of implement and improve your system. Okay, so I remember, um, you know, Martin was used, uh, and, I, and I saw on the website, is still used as uh, like one of the customers, like one of the sort of shiny customers that got a lot out of the system. But um, I remember when Actually, so he used and tried the system mostly when he was uh, sort of injured, right? Um, and that was before, actually. So he had uh, um, his period with uh, his injury and using PRS. That was he. That was right before I joined, or maybe a year or so before I joined uh, uh, PRS. But what was special about Martin when he used the system was like right from the get go. He would have like insane statistics statistical results in the system. So his, and th that was like right when he started, like typically when you start with a system, you, um, you, you need a little bit of time to get used to the system and sort of uh, understand the environment, et cetera, and all of that. <clears throat> he pretty much got it right away. And he like blew, uh, he like uh, blew all the records for the statistics, stat like scanning statistics for the system. And uh, it turned out that um, this, uh, be, like the like the tool, it's and and also Martin was already known for being a good scanner, right? 
uh, that, that was no secret. He was already known for being for for uh, being good at uh, the awareness, vision, and, and 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 scanning on the pitch. But what was interesting was that the tool or the system, the VRS system, basically confirmed it just with hard numbers. So you can see how many scans they did, you know, per you know, I guess they measure it per second uh, or per uh, per minute. And it turned out like uh, he wanted to increase the speed even more uh, from the scenarios that were in the system. So he, he wanted, uh, you know, just a, an even more challenge. I think he wanted to play this because the, the scenarios at that point, I guess they still are, <clears throat> were marketed and sort of they were trying to uh, design the scenarios so that the speed of play would be exactly the same as it was in real life. So at that point, I don't know if you know this, I mean, now it's a little, and I know the system is a little bit different, but back then what they would basically do, like how they created the system, was they would look, they would look at real life, like real videos from real games and pick a scenario, select a scenario from that video, and they would sort of code it into the like um, uh, into an animated version in the system. So these were scenarios from real life, from real, real professional games, like challenging scenarios. And, um, and uh, so that's what you would play. Now I know they, they have it like an AI system um, that, that creates, um, that creates the scenarios, et cetera. But at that point the, there were uh, these scenarios and they tried to do it the same at the same speed as the video was, but Martin, for Martin, he wanted it even high, like double the speed just for a bigger challenge. But I guess what I learned was that, uh, first of all, Martin is amazing <laughs> uh, on that stuff. And uh, uh, second, you could use the system to basically verify. Uh, it could be like an assessment tool as well as a training system um, uh, for it. So I guess, you know, I never got to meet him. So I can say, uh, I, I, probably if I had met him, I would have learned more. I got to meet all other uh, like impressive players, and national team players, etc., uh, in Norway and um, um, and other countries as well. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play podcast. Very interesting, very interesting. Okay, we have uh, seven minutes left. I need to squeeze three questions. If okay, one, let's if do we, it. If I'll, yeah. I'll be quick. I'll answer. I'll answer more efficiently. Let's no, so it. so one one is a bit longer and two two like a side side question. So uh, the the first one is uh, has there ever been a success story uh, with be your best like the player that uh, made a big big uh, changes while using the system. The second question, uh, what what's uh, what's what are you doing now? Where are you working now? And the third question is uh, plans for the future. Right. So the, in terms of success stories, um, that, that's, that's a really hard one. I like in terms of my personal success stories from from um, from Be Your Best was like uh, we never got to sell like a real big contract, at least when I was there, uh, to like a big club in the way that we wanted. The the we focused basically from as as COVID hit, we focused more from B two B selling directly to clubs to try to transitioning to try to sell the system directly to players. So, um, as sort of the and the, the here's a funny story. The biggest contract I think that I sold to a club during my time at Be Your Best. This is funny. Was not a football club. It was a rugby club. But oh, turns wow. out. <laughs> Turns out scanning is just as important, maybe if not more important in rugby than it is in football. You know, uh, in football, you scan obviously to increase your awareness and make better decisions. Um, and the decision is typically where to move or where to pass the ball, right? Uh, in rugby, <laughs> you need to scan in order not to get sort of knocked out from or uh, tackled by a different player. So there are like safety reasons or security reasons to uh, to improve your scanning, right? So you don't hurt yourself pretty much. But it was super interesting. They, and I think they got in touch with us initially um, inquiring about the system, but they actually, I, I think they bought the system without even having tried it. That, that's like the, uh, I think the only, uh, or maybe they did, I can't remember. But anyway, 
they actually, that was the biggest contract I sold to an individual club, was actually a rugby club um, in Australia. I remember that. But I think they were super happy with the system uh, and they actually implemented it uh, the way that I think Be Your Best had envisioned it. So that was like a success story for me. But besides that, to me, like the, 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 you know, the coolest part about that job was actually get, being in touch with the individual players, especially like the good players, like the, right, basically the pro players, um, mainly Norwegian uh, players, some of them on the national team. And just being there, I was their contact person um, uh, for the system. And they would sometimes I would get in discussions with them on the optimal use of the system and general, you know, in general, how they train on their own, et cetera. That was super, super interesting uh, for me to be a part of. That was also part of the appeal of uh, joining the company in the first place. So, um, but I can't really say like, you know, a success story like, okay, so this player started here and then he was, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, got here. Um, I, there might be some of them, some of them and, uh, but, but not like super, super impressive to me. It was, uh, but, but the, the individual players that I spoke to definitely, they enjoyed it. They told them, uh, the system improved, uh, first and foremost, their awareness of scanning on the pitch. So just using the system for, you know, uh, an hour or so, or maybe not even an hour, like 15 minutes or so, um, sometime before you play a game, it would just increase your awareness of the fact that you need to scan. So you, your scanning would just simply by using it, just improve um, because of your awareness level. So that was, um, uh, that was that. Okay, the second question was about what am I doing now? Is that yes, question? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. So right now I'm still in tech. I'm still in sales. Uh, right now I sell services. So I work for a company called uh, Neurosys. We're basically software developers. So we have around 100 developers, uh, mainly in Poland. Actually, it's a Polish company. So uh, most of the developers are um, are uh, in Poland, but we have a the company has a presence, um, I think, in four different countries in Europe, including here in Norway. And basically what we do is um, uh, develop software products for clients or software solutions. So if you ever need to um, develop an app, uh, for example, like a training system, uh, like the Arbestas, uh, you can mm -hmm. use uh, us. And so my job is basically to sell those services. And for the future, yeah, I mean, for the future, I'm, um, you know, still quite ambitious about the job and what we do at Neurosys. So our goal here, um, my goal here, um, and the job that I have right now at Neurosys is to grow the Norwegian entity, um, both in terms of uh, turnover, um, you know, basically money uh, made, clients, et cetera, increased, and, but also in, the term, in terms of number of employees. So we want to grow as a company as well, but organically. Yeah, so, and yeah, I'm, you know, here in Oslo, I have a daughter, um, uh, six-year-old daughter, so I need to care, take care of her, so and all of that stuff. So, but yeah, I'm doing this for myself and 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 her and uh, my maybe my future family. So that's me. I'm going to be in sales. I love it. Mm -hmm. Will your daughter be a, an athlete? Actually, I hope so. She's trying different things out, like dancing, gymnastics, all that stuff. I'm going to take her to the tennis court and see if. Uh, she enjoys that, uh, and then she starts school in the fall, and then at some point, it's probably going to be football or something, and different sports as well to try out. But yeah, I hope, I hope yeah. she becomes an athlete. Yeah. It was nice to meet you, Bastian. Being a very you too, Fendi, Patrick. Good insights. Pleasure joining you, and good luck with uh, the podcast in general. Like, what episode is this? If like, do you have like an you work on episodes or? Yeah, so that's how many the, do you have in the back? Yeah, that I think that's an episode like twenty two or something. But uh, okay, yeah, we we still have a long way to do with editing. So uh, right yeah, now we just have part. one, one, yeah, one uh, one episode out. But uh, yeah, it's maybe your episode will be out maybe in like in three months. But uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So you need to get those. Okay, so do you edit yourself? Yes, yes, I edit and Ferdi posts. So that's okay. The, yeah. Yeah, you should try maybe try to think to outsource that stuff, uh, the editing. But yeah, like you can find some like fairly affordable people that would do okay. uh, like easy editing. Um, I don't know for like ten dollars an hour or something like that.
Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.